It looks like this crowd in Beijing is popping open cans of soda. But look carefully. These cans are actually filled with nothing but air, fresh air. Currently, it's a prized commodity in Beijing. And this is the latest venture from Chen Gongbiao, one of China's richest men. I'm selling this clean air to remind everyone to protect our environment. If we don't, in 10 years, our descendants will all be wearing gas masks. Chen gave away hundreds of cans of what he says is clean air, each bearing his picture on the smoggy streets of Beijing Wednesday. The Chinese capital is choking with pollution, recording its worst ever air quality this month. And these Beijing residents appeared won over by Chen's message. When I first saw it, I thought it was a drink. I wouldn't have imagined it was fresh air. It's really great. It reminds people to use less fuel and do what they can for Beijing's air. I think that no matter whether it's a gimmick or just Mr. Chen making another social statement, I think it's very relevant right now. If the air keeps getting worse, then he will have a huge market. Chen is a well-known multimillionaire, entrepreneur, and philanthropist with a flair for publicity. Critics call his attempt to sell clean air a brazen stunt. But Chen disagrees, comparing his canned air to bottled water. Nothing I do is for fame or for personal benefit. I just want to use the years I have left in my life to tell more people to protect the environment, to be good, have good hearts, and do good deeds. Chen says he's been collecting clean air from far-flung regions across China since last year and plans to offer several flavors, like pristine Tibet. He's now selling his cans for about 80 cents a pop. Suzanne Malvo, CNN. Okay, today we're going to describe the main sources of carbon monoxide, oxides of nitrogen, oxides of sulfur, particulates, and volatile organic compounds in our atmosphere. Those together form the air pollutants that the IB wants you to know. They also want you to know the anthropogenic sources, the natural sources, and some of the problems they can cause in humans. So we're going to start off with our particulates. And when you're thinking about particulates, what you should really visualize is sort of smoke. So anything that's suspended in the air that's a particle, that's a particulate, they can cause respiratory problems, cancer, and smog. In terms of the natural sources of that, it comes down to a lot of volcanic eruptions, the smoke plumes, forest fires, the smoke, and dust, like dust storms, as well as pollen in some areas. In terms of anthropogenic causes, the industrial plants that produce smoke, so anything you have a smokestack, um, you could also call that soot, and the combustion of fossil fuels are the anthropogenic causes. Carbon monoxide is another one, and to visualize that, it's most commonly associated with carbon monoxide poisoning. And what happens there is basically your carbon monoxide will preferentially bind to oxygen, and thus your blood will not be able to carry oxygen to the rest of your body, so your body starts shutting down. So people just basically um, can die sort of while they're sleeping as long as they're breathing in carbon monoxide. Now, in terms of the natural sources of that, incomplete oxidation of methane in the atmosphere. So methane reacts with oxygen. If it does it in an incomplete way, you get carbon monoxide and water. And that methane actually comes from anaerobic decomposition in bacteria. Another way to get it is anthropogenic, the incomplete combustion of fossil fuels. So you take your fuel in a sort of oxygen deficient scenario, you get carbon monoxide and water. Onto the oxides of nitrogen and sulfur, they both have very similar um, effects. They can contribute to our smog. They can also contribute to acid rain. So you can see here that once these oxides get up into our atmosphere, they can react or get dissolved in our water in the atmosphere and then rain out as acid rain. So if we take a look at natural causes for each one of these, we find that bacterial action in the soil produces nitrogen monoxide and then that is further oxidized in our atmosphere to produce nitrogen dioxide. In terms of the anthropogenic sources, high temperature engine combustion. So whenever we have a rush hour, we see a sort of a spike in some of this. So uh, nitrogen monoxide can react with oxygen to produce nitrogen dioxide. And that is actually very um, dependent on the temperature of the city as well. So one, uh, one of these will be favored depending on the ambient temperature. 
in terms of sulfur dioxide and trioxide, a major source of that in nature are the volcanic eruptions that produce hydrogen sulfide. This is sort of a two-step. It again reacts with oxygen to produce sulfur dioxide. That sulfur dioxide can then react with more oxygen in our atmosphere to produce the sulfur trioxide. That can then cause the acid rain. In terms of anthropogenic, the combustion of sulfur containing coal or diesel. So the key there is sulfur containing. So smelting and sulfuric acid plants are also a source of this. In, in any of these cases, you're sort of looking at sulfur reacting with oxygen to produce sulfur dioxide, which can then further react with oxygen to produce sulfur trioxide, which can then cause the acid rain. And then our last one, VOCs. So VOCs are basically, you can think of fumes. That's not the one I wanted. There we go. Fumes. So any of the strong cleaners or chemicals or paints that you smell, those are generally VOCs and they can cause smog but also they can cause cancer. So anaerobic uh, decomposition also forms uh, methane, so that's a connection to up there. And in terms of anthropogenic, the incomplete combustion, again in vehicles, so I get, they find that there are a lot of VOCs. A lot of air cleaners will be designed to take out VOCs if they're high quality in the urban environment because of all the cars, but also paint. You can buy paint now that is VOC free and cleaning supplies. If you sort of avoid the stronger cleaners, then you'll have a reduction in VOCs in general. So what the IB is looking for is for you to know the natural anthropogenic sources. You need to know all of those sources and you need to know how they affect the human health. These equations here are important, so you do need to be able to reproduce those as well.